And I'm going to take you back to Saturday mornings before the sun came up. My sister and I would roll out of bed, tiptoe across the linoleum floor and into the living room where we approached the box. It was two feet wide by two feet deep by two feet tall and it had a switch. And when we switched it on, a tiny screen glowed. Yes, a TV in the 80s. <laughs> and we hoped, hoped that we would hear these words. Gathered together from the farthest reaches of the cosmos, here in this great hall of justice, are the most powerful forces for good of all mankind. Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman and Robin, Aquaman, and the Wonder Twins, Zan and Gina with their space monkey, Leap. <laughs> Dedicated to truth, justice, and peace for all mankind. It was the beginning of the Super Friends, our favorite Saturday morning cartoon. Oh, for just a few moments, we could forget that we were skinny little girls of divorced parents and imagine that we were superheroes, competent, strong, and able to make the world a safer and happier place to live. <sighs> then one Saturday morning, in between two episodes of Super Friends, a new commercial came on. It immediately caught our attention because Wonder Woman jumped into the screen and said, great Minerva, it's something new. And then a little girl wearing an undershirt, a white undershirt and little white panties said, it's underoos and she spun around and around and around and as she did her white underwear turned into a wonder woman super suit <laughs> then super girl flew in and said it's a real change in underwear and then the kids and superheroes alike began to sing wearing underoos is fun and you can choose more than one. There's Veronica and Josie too. Wonder Woman, Supergirl, which one are you? Underoos are fun to wear. Yeah, something super new in underwear. Na 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 we had to have underoos. We knew in our hearts that we were superheroes. And we got them for Christmas. We hid them underneath our ordinary clothing. But we knew, we knew it was there. That any time, any place, we could be super. We would jump off the couch and pretend to fly. We would stop the Legion of Doom in their tracks. This fueled our play for most of our childhood. Eventually, we grew out of wanting to be uh, superheroes, but I don't think my sister or I ever grew out of wanting to make the world a better, safer, happier place to live. My sister became the CEO of a cybersecurity company, protecting the world from cybersecurity attacks and devious hackers. And I did not. <laughs> I became an ordinary, everyday, pretty mediocre, Mom, <laughs> the only thing I really protected the world from was a toddler with a temper tantrum. 
<laughs> and all of my, you know, trying to make the world a better place really looked something like this. Rescuing my preschooler from a bathroom stall when she had escaped from me and figured out how to lock the door, but not how to unlock the door. So I had to climb on top of the toilet and hoist myself up and over the bathroom stall to land on the toilet adjacent and then unlock the door. Or it looked like chasing down a school bus that held my special needs child whom I wasn't there to pick up at my house when they dropped him off. Or it looked like taking a punch in the nose from my five-year-old when I told him, hey, what's going on, Mr. Grumpy Pants? <laughs> yep. But there was one Tuesday. My daughter and her best friend came in and they were bright-eyed and excited. They said, can we make cookies? Ah. Uh, I was right in the middle of something, and I did not want to stop being right in the middle of something to supervise two seven-year-olds making cookies. Well, she must have seen it in my face because my daughter Abby looked at me with a plan. She pulled out a cookie mix from behind her back and said, Mom, I have a cookie mix. All it needs is eggs and water. I can handle this. We've made cookies so many times. And I remember oven safety. Always wear oven mitts. I said, well, okay, how bad could it be? Go ahead and make some cookies. Oh, I tuned in to the giggling girls in the kitchen and the sounds of mixing uh, cups and uh, clanking and the sound of the beater moving around. And I thought, yeah, the worst thing that can happen is, you know, a really messy kitchen. It'll be fine. Well, several moments later, my daughter comes into the living room wearing two large oven mitts and a, carrying a hot cookie tray. She has tears welling up in her eyes and she just stands there and looks at me. I don't know what I did wrong, but these don't look like cookies. <laughs> she wasn't wrong. The only way I can describe what was on that cookie tray was a cookie blob. I think she had taken that cookie dough and cut out all of the little animals and rainbows and butterflies and then put every single one of them on the same tray. And they had all raised and spread into each other. I knew I had to do something because the first time I ever made cookies in the kitchen, I was 12. My mom had turned the kitchen over to me and I had pulled out my family's recipe, recipe for 10 dozen oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. My grandpa was a baker by trade. He owned his own bakery. My family bakes, it's what they do. We do nothing small. No three dozen cookie recipes for us. No, it's 10 dozen or bust. <laughs> I had mixed and made those cookies and I was so excited. I had visions of cookie stardom dancing in my head. I knew I was gonna be fantastic. And those cookies, oh, those cookies looked amazing. But when you put them in your mouth, they caused an immediate and severe reaction that looked a lot like running to the sink and, well, tossing your cookies. 
I had put two tablespoons of baking soda and salt in the recipe instead of two teaspoons of baking soda and salt in the recipe. I was 12 with a flair for drama and probably a little hormonal. You know those, those 12 year old girls. I fell to the floor. I ruined a 10 dozen oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. <sighs> my mom tried to convince me to call my grandpa and I said, no, I can't call grandpa. He's a baker. He'll be so disappointed in me. She finally convinced me. I called my grandpa and told him the whole, whole horrible tale of the two tablespoons of baking soda and salt. And uh, underneath my grandpa's ordinary white apron was something else. With his knowledge of baking and some quick calculations, he got back on the phone with me and he said, oh, Shotsley, you didn't ruin 10 dozen oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. You just started a batch of 80 dozen oatmeal <laughs> chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> really? Yes, yeah, just split the dough into eight different sections. Make the recipe again eight times, but don't put any baking soda or salt in it. Put the bad dough with each of the eight sections and you will have fantastic tasting cookies. My grandpa was right. I had 960. <laughs> Fantastic tasting cookies. We had so many cookies. We were giving them away to anyone and everyone we could find. And then we said, you want more? We've st still got 832 at home. Come on back. I couldn't really change the recipe on my daughter's disaster, nor could I change what was on the tray. I looked again, and that's when I saw it. <laughs> Abby, you have made the world's first cookie puzzle. You know what? The only thing that would make this puzzle better is she stopped me right in my tracks. Frosting! Yes, sweetheart. She went back into the kitchen and she and her friend decorated that cookie puzzle. And I will tell you that we have never had so much fun taking apart, putting back together, and eating a puzzle. <laughs> My daughter went on to become a chef. So it just goes to show you, even though we all walk around in our ordinary clothes, you just never know when the moment will come that you can be a superhero. <laughs>